Hi, Dan Wilson with Badger Eye here. I'm standing in a park and ride at the intersection of I-94, which is over here to my right, and State Highway 11, which is right over here. This is the northwest corner of a parcel that is going to be purchased by Foxconn for their plant that they plan to build here with three billion dollars of taxpayers' money. Now the parcel they have in mind is about 1,200 acres here, bounded on the north by Highway 11, obviously on the east by I-94, or on the west by I-94, on the east by Highway H, and then on the south is Brown Road. It's uh, two miles, it's a rectangle, two miles by one mile, so uh, that comes about 1,280 acres, and what we're going to do is we're going to take you on a video tour of the circumference of this property, give you an idea of what land they are going to ravage with their huge plant. Now, having said that, this is a highly industrialized area already, even though you won't see that from the first team views that we're going to have. Um, we're just, we're not far outside of the city limits of Racine and there's access to utilities in this area obviously for uh, the kind of power needs that a company like this would require. What kind of water and sewer is open question but I'm sure that'll be answered eventually. So we're going to start, we're going to go east on Highway 11 as we start our tour and uh, circle to H and Brown Road and back to where we started from. So we're going to proceed out of the parking lot here and uh, turn right or actually east on Highway 11 which forms the northern border of this parcel and right now we're proceeding out onto the service drive which runs parallel to I-94. Um, You'll notice right away a lot of residential houses uh, uh, along the way. Uh, obviously those would have to be purchased. But basically it's mostly farmland. Um, it's fairly pristine, if you think of it. Farmland is pristine as, or untouched. Highway 11 is a major thoroughfare. and does have ramps off of I-94. So it's an ideal place for industrial development and um, what you can't see from here is that along I-94 there's a lot of it's an industrial corridor along this section of, of highway so here you can see the farm fields and uh, we're going to go for about two miles till we intersect with County H to go uh, south on the eastern border of the property uh, this straddles both uh, the town of Mount Pleasant and village of Sturdivant, and I would assume that the village of Sturdivant will have to annex this entire or most of this parcel uh, to provide utilities, which they would then finance using TIF tax incremental financing, uh, which is a risk, a big risk, because it could cost millions of dollars for plant upgrades, extended utilities, street cut ins, curb and gutter. And you find that over maybe 27 years, and you bet that the property taxes collected will cover the payments. And that presumes the business will still be there at the end of those 27 years. So here's uh, residential properties, farm fields, and again, we're in the town of Mount Pleasant. This is good dramatically changed the landscape. Uh, I can't quite envision a ten billion dollar construction project that boggles the mind or ten thousand construction employees. I think a lot of that is is hype. Uh, for example, one of the bigger construction projects in the state, the market interchange only has a few hundred employees, so I'm not entirely sure where you'd find 10,000 construction workers and skilled labor. You'd have to have a lot of union labor work on that job. So we're coming up now on the eastern border and uh, you'll see a large firm on the northeast corner of this parcel here. I'd rather doubt that they would be bought out or moved. They would have to work around them. 
So we're now we're going to turn right, head south along the eastern border for about a mile. This parcel measures for almost exactly, you know, two miles by one mile, so two square miles. Uh, so you, it, it's a safe bet that there's a lot of plenty of electrical power available for this area, judging by the industrial uh, parcels that are already there. And again, you're only, what, 15 miles south of the largest power plant in Wisconsin at Oak Creek, which unfortunately burns fossil fuels. So this, uh, again, getting back to the village of Sturdivant, that's going to be a lot of political activity that's going to take place over the winter months uh, as the, these plans get formulated. Um, I would hope that there will be some coverage of those meetings uh, and certainly records requests because local officials are almost always reluctant to give up documents. And based on my experience as a reporter, they get snake bit when they're dealing with a big company. They're easily intimidated. Um, here's a wooded area, some, some beautiful homes. And you'll see that we're going to be coming up on Brown Road as we pass a small wooded area. Again, the bulk of this, probably 90% of the acreage here is uh, farmland. And here's Brown Road. You'll see the markers that have already been marked out to delineate the wetlands that need to be protected or moreover um, fault or recreated somewhere else. If I don't know how much these roads would need to be improved. And again, that would be in the bailiwick of the DOT once the plans get filed, they'll determine where all the cut-ins can be, can be permitted. So, again, all these property owners, I have no idea if they've been contacted or already have options on their property, but there's going to be some pretty intense negotiations going on over the next six months because Foxconn intends to break ground in the spring. So, we can, I remember growing up in outskirts of Milwaukee we saw a lot of land like this but got gobbled up over the years and parceled out and farms just disappeared overnight so but will Foxconn be here 27 years from now I have my doubts or at least not in the current form a lot of local municipalities got in trouble with TIF districts because they're still making the payments long after the businesses have quit paying their property taxes, or especially after the 2008 recession, which saw a lot of businesses fold up. And then a lot of other municipalities made improvements to empty parcels. They're still waiting for developers to come in, but again, they have to make those payments. Diff districts are a form of corporate welfare, and they always have been. Some would argue that it helps small businesses as well, but small businesses have a track record of going under just as easily. So here we're going to, we're approaching now the western border of this parcel, which is essentially the service road along I-94. one of the bigger farms. It's hard to tell which farm owns which parcel. But a lot of pumpkins, a lot of soybeans, a lot of corn in this area. So okay. Now you can see the highway and the traffic. 
And I'm sure that uh, by spring, this whole area will probably be fenced in. It's usually one of the first things developers do when they get a parcel like this. So. Now we're going to be coming up uh, back to where we started from at the park and ride. So all things considered, it's an ideal location for a business on this scale. you got a park and ride that can bring workers in from Milwaukee. Uh, heck, there's even an Amtrak station a few miles up the road for whatever that's worth. And you have access to Interstate Highway, Chicago and Milwaukee and Billy, easy access to Billy Mitchell Airport. So, and then you'll see some of the nicest properties here at this northeast corner as we approach Highway 11. And you'll see that we're back to where we started from at the park and ride parking lot at the intersection of I-94 and Highway 11. And that's our tour. Thank you.